Hello, and welcome to another training video on how to better use your SideScan sonar system. I'm Reagan Lipinski, and I am the training director for Marine Sonic Technology. We design, develop, and manufacture SideScan sonar equipment. Today, we will be talking about gain and TVG and how to use those to get better image quality and to adjust images of your anomalies. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered how to get your images to look like the professionals? How do you adjust them? How, how do you make them better than what they were when you collected them? There's a few things that you need to know to understand what is creating the image and how you can adjust it to make it look better. All right, the topics we'll be covering today are going to be image creation, gain, and TVG. Now with image creation, a lot of it has to do with color and density, which we went over in great detail in our first video, which was the basics to side scan sonar. And you should really go check that one out before you watch this one. But we will be covering today is frequency, power, and amplification. After that, we'll get into gain, auto gain, and histogram, and how those play a role in your actual images. After that, TVGs. What is a TVG? Most people don't even know what that is. And if they do, they don't really understand it. So I'm gonna try to explain everything in the most layman's terms uh, so everybody can understand what it is and how it works. Now, if you're a professional side scan sonar user or you have some degree or background in sonar, this might not be the video for you because the way I'm going to be explaining it is for the average person to understand. I'm not gonna get into any scientific and technical equations or anything like that. Just really basic, what it is, what it does, and how it affects the image. So let's start with the image creation itself. Now, like I explained in the first video, you have the color of the image. The brighter the color, the more dense the object is. The less bright the color, the less dense the object is. Now, if you wanna see why that is or how that works, check out the first video. Same with the reflectivity. We can kind of get into that because it, it goes with our first real topic of frequency power. So your frequency will have a certain amount of energy to it, right? big ball of energy that's coming out. Now we all know it, it's actually a wave. It's just easier to explain when you, when you picture it as a ball. So we have this big ball of energy that we're sending out of the sonar. Well, as that energy leaves, it is now entering the water. And the water around it is going to absorb some of that energy. So our ball is gonna get smaller, right? Or the energy level of the frequency wave is going to decrease as that wave moves through the water. Then it's going to strike an object. So if we have an object and then the wave hits the object, that object is going to absorb some of the energy. You're basically exciting the molecules that are within the object itself. The more those objects can vibrate back and forth, the more energy it's going to absorb to cause those molecules to vibrate. Once that object gets saturated with energy and it can't accept any more, those molecules can't bounce any faster, it's going to reject the rest of that energy. And that's called reflection. So now it's reflecting the rest of that energy to go back to the towfish. Okay. Then as that energy is moving back through the water to the towfish, um, more of that energy is being absorbed by the water it's traveling through until you get back to the towfish, and then we get a certain amount of energy that gets absorbed back into the transducer. Now the transducer has to determine how much energy was absorbed by the water and how much energy was absorbed by the object in order to give the density, okay? So an easy way or a less complex way to explain that is we're just gonna use a percentage. So if you look at the image at the bottom of your screen, we have a, a little um, icon of a towfish. Basically, it's a towfish pointing at you. 
Um, in that top line, we can see 100% of the energy from that frequency wave is now leaving the towfish and moving across the water. Now, the second icon is the water itself. And so that's, that's telling us that 20% of the energy from that 100% that was left is being absorbed into the water. Now that 20%, it's not a, an actual figure, right? It's, that's gonna dif differentiate between the water you're in, the type of water you're in, salinity, all different kinds of things, okay? It's just a representation that energy is being lost to the water. It's gonna keep flowing across until it hits an object. Now my icon here is a shopping cart. I just happen to have an image of a shopping cart um, there. And a shopping cart is pretty dense, right? It's made of metal. And so it's gonna come back. We know dense objects come back as bright returns. So as that energy hits, 40% of the energy that hit it is now being absorbed by the shopping cart itself before it gets saturated and starts to reflect that sound back. Um, again, now it's traveling back through the water again, and another 20% is being absorbed by the water. So when the frequency makes its way back to the towfish, we only have 20% left. So we had 100% leaving, we have 20% receiving. All right, so once the amount of energy gets back to the towfish, those numbers are usually going to be pretty small. And so the system will inject or amplify that energy to boost it to readable levels. Um, usually that's a, a cut number all the way across your entire survey, and we call that gain. How much amplification are we going to add to the signal once it returns? Now you can increase and decrease um, gain, usually there, there's some tool in your system that will allow you to adjust for gain. Auto gain, gain, and histogram. What's the difference, right? Auto gain is your system trying to create a decent gain for you so you don't have to mess with it, okay? It just about every system out there will have some type of auto gain and most people will just leave it on that setting and let it run. It's going to give you the overall the best imaging for the entire survey. Now it doesn't correlate to specific objects and specific densities, um, but it does give a, do a good job over the entirety of the survey. And how it works is it takes a thousand lines of data and it sees the highest density and the lowest density of that last thousand lines. It will then adjust and average that out to create an equal gain for the entire survey, okay? That's why you'll have some objects that are really, really bright and some objects that are really, really dark because the gain is set for the average uh, anomaly that you're looking at. So we can control gain as well, um, taking it out of auto gain and adjusting that gain for a specific object. Now, if you do that adjustment, it's going to adjust it probably for the entire survey, right? So that means the areas where you don't have a really dense object, they're gonna get really, really dark, okay? Um, or uh, where you're looking at something that is low density, um, either victims or seagrass or uh, silty soils. Um, if you gain those up so you can see those, it's gonna make the really high dense areas ultra bright, okay? Because remember, auto gain is just a balance um, between all of the gains that it's actually looking at. The histogram is a little different. The histogram takes from zero to 100 um, of each one of the gain sets that it's getting. And so we can add or subtract the highs and the lows uh, adjusting uh, for that. So let's take a look at some of the imaging and, and how do we adjust gain and how do we adjust histogram? Now you can't really adjust for auto gain. You either turn it on or you turn it off. I suggest that you do your base survey, right? Where you go out, you put the towfish in the water and you drag it um, using auto gain. 
once you've done your complete search pattern and you are done for the day and you take that imaging back to the office and you're going over it in the office, you'll find your different anomalies and you can adjust the game for a specific anomaly to make that object uh, brighter, darker, better view, um, all kinds of stuff. And we're going to show you how to do that today. So let's look at some differences. Okay. So the imaging that I'm that we're going to be looking at today was when I was training uh, Mudsu, which is the mobile diving and salvage unit out of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The main object we'll be looking at today is the USS Utah, which was sunk during the Battle of Pearl Harbor. So if you look at the lower left hand image, um, it's really, really bright. Okay. And so that is the raw imaging that was taken when my students or the Navy guys uh, dropped the towfish in the water and they drug it past the USS Utah. Now, it was extremely bright and they started out a little disappointed in the imaging because they had seen my previous images of the USS Utah and they expected to see that type of imaging. And I told them, don't worry, we're going to adjust for that later. But the, the area around the USS Utah is very muddy, right? It's, it's very flat mud. There's not a whole lot of objects in the water there. And so the auto gain gained up because the low densities that it was, it was seeing, it wanted to see with better detail. So the auto gain raised the gain. So when we passed the Utah, it was too much gain uh, for you to really see what was going on with the Utah. So then we have image number two, and that is where we did a base correction for the auto gain where we took it out of auto gain, put it in manual and adjusted specifically for that object. Now you'll see in the far right, um, we have our image adjustment window. Now this is a tool uh, specifically in C-Scan Survey, which is a marine sonic uh, software set that comes with our systems. So your gain adjustment for your particular system may look different. Hopefully you have all the same tools. If not, there are different ways to adjust gain. Just uh, get with your manufacturer and figure out how or if they allow you to adjust for gain and histogram. But let's take a look at how that actually all works. With ours, we have a little gain slider. And so that's going to increase or decrease uh, the amount of gain um, that is, is being seen through the image at any particular time. Okay, and like we explained in the last slide, we are basically adding energy to that sound wave. Okay, so the more gain, the more energy we're adding to the sound wave, the less gain, the less energy we're adding to the sound wave. Now you'll see the, the black and white image next to that where it says data histogram. Okay, so our histogram is basically all the different densities that the side scan is seeing within that particular line uh, in one ping going across. And so you'll see all those spikes, right? So if you imagine where it says minimum being zero and maximum being 100, it's breaking all those densities down into 100 different slots, okay? And where you see all the spikes that are coming up, all those spikes that are coming up are different densities. The higher the spike in the histogram is the more uh, pixels that have that particular density. And so we can add densities and we can take out densities. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. The image below that, where you see the red spikes, um, that is our A mode. And the A mode is with in the survey itself, you're going to see these spikes going up and down. And they correlate, each one of those spikes correlates to the pixel directly below it, okay? And so you can see where we have very bright pixels, we have very tall spikes. So it's giving you a visual reference of how dense that particular pixel is on the screen. So 
the histogram and the A mode are different. I don't want you to think that those two are the same. Remember the A mode or the what you're seeing in the red at the very bottom of the screen, that spike correlates to a very specific pixel on the screen and it's the pixel directly below the spike. In the histogram, we are breaking all the densities across the entire ping into 100 slots, okay? And so all the pixels that correlate to 80% density um, will show up as a big bunch of group or a larger spike. So the more densities you have that are the same will equal the height of that spike there, okay? Well, let's see this in action. Let's see it actually work and we'll do some adjustment. This is the USS Utah. Um, I believe it is the second pass um, that we've made. And we can see it is the same image that we saw in the PowerPoint presentation. And it is gained way too high. So our auto gain is working. I mean, you can see the imaging that we're getting beside it. And we'll actually rewind before the Utah. And we'll see where we arrived at that game. Let the whole ship go by. And we'll stop at about here. So you can see the gain is actually really good. We can see we have a good overall average of densities going across both sides. Okay, green being starboard, red being port. Um, and we can see within that image that everything is gained as it should be or as you would expect it to see. Um, they are kind of high, which is why the Navy here is quite big, but I think they were, they were a little scared of running into the bottom. This was the first time that these guys had ever put the towfish in the water. So we went through a complete day of classroom training, and we went through about two hours that morning of me using the system. And now I've turned it over to them. They plugged it all in and they're starting to use it. And so our auto gain has averaged over the last thousand lines of data and it created this gain. However, it can't anticipate what it's going to see in the future. And so once it starts to hit uh, the ship, now the ship is, is steel, it's metal, it's, it's extremely dense. And that's what we're seeing right here which is extremely high um, compared to the densities that are around it. And so we haven't gone through enough time for the computer to say, oh, we need to gain this down. Now you'll see as we first started, it was really bright. And as we're moving across the ship, it's starting to incorporate uh, these densities into the auto gain and it's starting to gain it down. But the ship's not long enough um, to completely cover that whole auto ranging scale. And so by the time we get to the end of the ship, we are still really bright, but we want that detail, right? There's no way of getting around um, getting a bright image of the ship because of the low densities that are around it. So we need to adjust for that specifically. We can't uh, just rely on the auto gain. Now it'll give you a good image. I mean, that's a pretty decent image um, right out of the box without doing any adjustments whatsoever um, to your gain. And so we're gonna wait until this little anchor object gets down here to the bottom and then we're going to stop it and we're gonna adjust the gain. All right, so there we are. Got our little anchor object. We got the, the vessel here. Um, this is actually the bow. Uh, of the vessel and we can see some uh, anchor lines and anchor chain. Um, this is the port for them. And this is kind of a net that's, that's attached to the top to kind of give you a better reference of where we are. Let me pin this open real quick and we'll show you. This is the island of Oahu. And this here is Pearl Harbor. Okay, so as we zoom in, we can see 
Hickam Air Force Base, Pearl Harbor, all of that's included into this. Uh, this is Bishop's Point down here. Um, and I believe this is Battleship Row. This should be um, the Arizona. Uh, but right here is, is the USS Utah. And it is the best one to do training for side scan. And so, so here we have the Utah sunk and part, it's partially above the water. And we're using that to scan by. So that just gives you a reference uh, of where we are. And uh, get rid of it. All right, so one, how do we adjust for gain? And two, how can we get the best imaging out of gain? What we first want to do is make all of these average points. And we're going to rewind a little bit just so the density of the ship is touching that bottom line. Because remember, each one of these spikes correlates to the single pixel line directly below it, right? So this pixel line right there is one ping. So we need to make sure that our ship or our highest densities are touching that line. And so that way we can see how high those densities actually go. And they're actually well above. Um, so we need to tone down our gain so we can see all of those pixel lines uh, within this black area. And we can do that. Let's, let's increase this real quick so we can see all of our density lines. And you can drag this all the way down to the bottom so you can get a difference of, of densities for any pixel that you wish. All right. So how do we start our gain adjustment? How do we take it out of auto gain? Uh, well, we have a tab called the image adjustment window. And if you don't have that available, we have all these little tabs that go around your waterfall um, that, that do all kinds of different things. Uh, but how do you get to the image adjustment window if you don't see that tab is you can come up here to view and click on view and you'll find image adjustment window. Just make sure that that is checked, okay? And that's what this window is right here on the right hand side of our screen. We're going to have the image adjustment window for waterfall one and waterfall two. We're not going to worry about waterfall two today. We're just going to do uh, our, our image that we can see. Okay, so first thing we want to do is click manual gain. Okay, so that's going to take it out of auto gain and go into manual. We're going to hit reset, which is going to reset our histogram triangles, which are these two little triangles right there. And so we have our gain. If you can see where my mouse is, we have our gain here and we have our histogram window here. Now, this is all for the port channel and this is all for the starboard channel. And so we're going to start off messing with our starboard channel, which is where our ship is. And we're going to see if we can gain that down and get a useful image out of that there. I mean, it is so bright that you can't really see any detail um, out of that ship. So we can start off by just either increasing or decreasing our little slider uh, here. And you can see if we gain it all the way up and hit apply to all data, it's gonna bright out the screen because we increased from a percentage of the energy return to maxing it out at back to 100%. And we can decrease it all the way to the bottom and that takes all the gain away. Um, and we are down to basic raw data. Now that may be a decent image for you. Um, however, we're losing detail. So what we wanna do is we want to decrease our gain until we can see all of our density markers. Okay, make sure all of your density markers are within um, your A mode. Then you're gonna click apply to all data, okay? So that's our first net, made it a lot better. If we look at it, we can see a lot more detail. And what I did is I just selected the starboard channel. So if both channels are still there. I just selected the starboard channel. So we're only doing that one right now, but we can see all of our density levels are within our A mode and we can start seeing a whole bunch more detail within this. So now we can adjust for our histogram. 
And so remember what I said is your histogram is your low densities and your high densities. And so we can take out lows and we can take out highs. Okay, just by sliding this bar over, we can start removing densities. So I just removed all of the lows, zero being low, 100 being high. And so the more of these I take out, you'll see that our averages, if you start watching our A mode again, we can see that our averages are going down and the only the really high uh, densities are left. And if we hit apply to all data, we can see that all we have left are the really high densities. And we can drag this all the way down and apply again. And we can see just the extremely high dense areas of the ship. Now, if you're out there looking for a really dense object in a really cluttered area, say a handgun within a bunch of rocks, that is one of the most hard searches that you can do is to locate a chunk of metal in a grouping of rocks. Okay, so how would you do that? You would, one, gain down so all your averages are across. And then you would come in and you would change your histogram, getting rid of all the lower densities. And so now we only want to see from the 82% all the way to 100% density. Um, that's what we want to see. So that's, that's a good way of being able to see high density materials in a high density area. Just make sure that the object you're looking for is more dense than the area around it. Otherwise, you can reduce the highs, get rid of those higher end densities, um, hit apply to all data, and we can start seeing and manipulating which grouping of densities we want to see. We only want to see the lows, we can do just the group of lows. Now it's only going to show us what's in between those fields, right? So now we're starting to look at lower densities. Just that little group of low densities that apply to all data. Now, why is it really bright? Even though we're looking at only the low densities. It's really bright because again, it's an average, it takes the high, takes the low and puts the color in between. So let's open this back up and we can take out some of those highs that apply to all data or some of the lows that apply to all data. And eventually we can keep working this until we get a good image or an image that we like. Right now you can see that I just took out a majority or the basically the lower 15% or so of, of the low density. So now we're only seeing 15% or 17% um, and up to 100 of the high densities. We take our magnifying glass and start seeing, we can now see uh, detail in there that we were not able to see before, okay? Start seeing a lot of good detail in there that we weren't able to before, just by manipulating the, the histogram. Now again, gain is going to adjust the overall um, average of densities that are in there. But again, you're gonna have really high densities and you have really low densities. And so you need to kind of average those, uh, put your gain in between or in the middle of that high and low. Um, and then your histogram is going to take out really high points or take out really low points. Sometimes most people can't understand this concept and they can't really figure out in their mind, well, what, what do I need to take out? What do I need to add? Um, and, and how do I manipulate this? Well, go in and play with it and see how that works. But there is another easier way. And how I usually do it is I'll come to tools and then settings, waterfall settings, little plus sign, and then I have another image adjustment. 
And this is where we're going to look at our TBGs later, but we're not doing TBGs right now. Um, and we have our color palette, right? So right now our color palette is on bronze. And bronze is the best one um, for the average everyday side scan sonar operator who's out there who wants to see all the different uh, densities that are out there. Uh, it's going to give you the most available and give you the best view of your image. But when you're doing your adjustment, I come down here to what's called HSV. No idea what that acronym stands for. One of our engineers created it. Um, but it's basically this rainbow color pattern. And it's going to group our levels of density by color. Okay. And so we have reds being really high, uh, this orangish color being really low, uh, greens and blues being somewhat in the middle. And this middle area is where we want to be. So if I click apply, you can see our colors have completely changed, right? And what I want to do is I want to be somewhere in between this blue and this green to get the best image that I can. And so I can start adjusting my histogram. and my gain until I get rid of all of that really dark blue and dark red. Now we're not going to get rid of this dark orange here, right? Because that's really low dense areas. Uh, that's that's the, the ground itself and the water column, which have no density at all. We're just doing this for a specific anomaly. All right, so now I've gotten rid of a lot of those blues. I want to increase. And so we can get it to a point where we have a, an average kind of green color around. You may need to go back in here and adjust the gain a little bit. Okay, too low, so we're gonna adjust those up. There we go. So we've gotten rid of uh, a lot of the blues. We've kind of evened this tone across, and now we're going to switch back to our bronze. Click apply, click OK. And now we have a lot of good detail within our image without losing our game. So we can kind of backtrack here down to the other part of the ship. Now, if you'll remember from the other, from the last time we looked at it, this was extremely bright and we couldn't see any of this detail within here now, but look at all that structure you can see now. Look at that. Now we can take out manual gain. We can click um, apply to all data and we can kind of see what it was like before, before we did our adjustments and then we can click manual gain and we can hit apply and we can see how much better that image looks. And you can keep tweaking this and keep tweaking it until you get the exact perfect image. But remember, because that ship is so long, um, you're not going to be able to adjust for the entire ship as a whole. You're really only adjusting for a small portion of it or like this object here. See, this object is relatively small. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space on your screen. And so we can adjust that one. We haven't touched this side yet. Uh, we, we were only messing with the starboard side. So now let's play with the port and see if we can get this image adjusted as well. And so I'm gonna go back up here and let's see if we can do the tool settings, waterfall, image adjustment. Let's change our color back to HSV. Right, 
and we can see a lot of those higher densities in here and a lot of the lower densities in here with just about zero density within that. And so first thing we're going to do is go up and put our object on the line. And we're going to adjust our gain to make sure that all of our spikes are within, right? Then we can change to that HSB. Gains are still really high, so let's gain it down. We can take out some of our highs here. Click apply. Across. All right, so let's see how that looks in bronze. There we go. Look at that. Got all data again. There we are. And we can now see within that. See a buried anchor there. It's like a small little uh, canoe or something. It's within there. And so let's see what that looked like without. So we couldn't really see what any of this was before. We saw a good shadow in there, but it was just so bright that we couldn't really tell what was going on. But once we take that away and we lower it down a little bit, we can see a lot more. If you want to keep playing with it, you can keep adjusting it. And we can even go to the point like we did on the other side where you're only seeing the bright points. Keep adding in bright points until you get just the detail you need to search the area. So I hope that that gives you a better understanding of how to adjust the game and how to adjust your histogram. Main key point that you need to do and realize is that you need all of your densities within a range um, that the system can determine what they are. And that is basically bringing these densities down within your A mode. Again, gain is just adding to or taking away amplification that was given to the energy of the sound wave as it returned to the tofish. All right, I hope that gave you a better understanding of auto gain in game and histogram. And if you're still not understanding, uh, please give me a call uh, or email, Facebook me, however you want to do it. Contact me in our sonar group, um, however you'd like to do that, and, and ask me. And, and we can talk about it over the phone or maybe set up a, another Zoom meeting specific and so we can go into greater detail into that. Next, TVGs, even more complicated subject. Um, than gain. So what is TVG? Now you'll see TVG uh, in just about every system that's out there. A lot of them though won't give you control over your TVGs. It will just have either an auto TVG or where you, that you can turn on and off. Uh, but if you do have the ability to control your TVGs, this should give you a better understanding of what they are. TVG stands for time variable gain. 
and it's different than your auto gain because again your auto gain is covering the the entire um gain of the survey where your tvg your time variable gain is controlling the amount of gain over one specific pane we have three different points within tvg one is spreading okay and spreading is as the wave is exiting the towfish, it begins to spread out, okay? And if you are close to the surface, that wave doesn't have the ability to, to spread out because the top of the wave hits the top of the water. And that piece of the wave goes away, right? And so we get a very minimal spread because the rest of the wave is above the water line. It also comes into play when you're at the sea floor, okay? So if your tow fish is too low, you, the wave comes out and still can't spread because now the bottom of the wave is hitting the sea floor itself. And so as it's going out, the top of the wave will still spread up, but the bottom of the wave is hitting the sea floor. And so you're not getting the full spread that you need. And so we can adjust the amount of spread um, and we use a slider bar for that and i'll show you how to do that next is absorption how much of that wave is being absorbed by the object and being absorbed by the water and so we can control uh the absorption the absorption are are basically and its loss is caused by friction okay uh, friction as a force if you can if you can call it that uh, but as it's moving through the water um, it's movement through the water, that energy is being lost and it's being absorbed by the water or the objects that it's hitting. Next is offset. Uh, offset's kind of tricky. So you have your tow fish and it's moving through the water. So we're gonna go from the bottom of our screen to the top of our screen, okay? And it's constantly moving. As it's moving through the water, we're sending out these pings. And so as tow fish comes up, the, we release the ping, it goes out, and it comes back to the towfish, but the towfish isn't stationary, right? So it doesn't go out and come back, right? So the towfish is moving, so it releases the sound wave, and then it comes back, and it hits the towfish up here rather than down here, okay? And so as it releases, the wave spreads, hits the objects, continues to spread, and we're hoping that at least a portion of that wave is still in contact with the fish as it returns. That our fish hasn't gone so fast that it outruns the spread of the ping. Okay, so offset is the difference between where it was and where it is when the ping leaves versus the ping coming back. Um, so we can control the amount of offset that happens or the offset correction that happens. We can't control the offset because once we release it, it's got to come back. Um, so we're controlling the correction of the offset. And these can make uh, some pretty dramatic effects uh, to your imaging. And so if you have the ability to control your TVGs and you're trying to tweak that one image, you just did it with gain, uh, played around with the histogram, but you're still not getting the quality of the image that you're expecting, Go in and play with the TVGs and see how that works. So let's open C scan survey again and see if we can adjust for these TVGs. All right, so we are uh, back on C scan survey. And so now we have the bow of the ship at the bottom and we have the stern at the top. But we're going to talk about TVGs. And the reason this is a good one for TVGs is because the towfish was really high um, in the water column in this shot okay and the water depth total where the uss utah is is about 35 feet so when you're trying to see such a big object in about 35 feet of water you're going to run into the spreading and absorption issues we have a really bright return and then all of this is just noise so there's two different ways that we can approach this. We can either adjust for gain first and then adjust TVG, or we can just adjust for TVG. I think we're gonna start off with adjusting gain and then adding in the TVG. And I'm gonna click manual gain 
let's go down to about 31. Let me go ahead and click just that side. Let's go down to about 31. Yeah. Click apply. And I want to keep our lower end bands because now that we've adjusted our gain really far down, um, we've, we've lost a, a lot of the issues that we were having with, with the brightness. And so let's just take away those upper end points. So now we got our brightness back. Uh, we can still see the ground. We're not losing any detail uh, within the image because we gained so low, right? 31 is a real low gain. But because it was so bright here, we can see the difference here. You can see how bright it was, right? That again, apply to all data. So you can see all of our points are within our A mode for the ship. And now we're going to adjust our TVGs. So again, we're going to open up tools, settings, waterfall with the little plus sign. You'll see another little group up here and image adjustments. And that's going to open up this window here. And we have manual TVG. Now, there's a couple of different things on here um, that you should be aware of. One is view raw data, right? So we can just click on, on raw data and hit apply. This is just the, the raw image without amplification, um, no adjustments really for anything. It's just the raw information that is coming back to the sonar. Doesn't make for a good image. Okay, next thing we have on here is the waterfall sub sample. And you can either do average or peak to tech. I like to keep it on average. You won't see much of a difference on this image, but when you go to adjust, you can change those. Peak to tech, it's uh, going to ping mainly on the, the peak densities. Average, it's gonna take an average of the densities. So we're going to leave it on average for now. Next is manual TVG. Okay, so manual TVG is taking away all the auto TVG that uh, the sonar believes it needs to put in, and it's giving the control over to you. The sonar doesn't know that it's close to the surface. It doesn't know that it's close to the bottom. It doesn't know that you want to see the ship and not the soil, right? And so it's going to set itself up for the average of any environment. Um, and that's what all of those autos do. It sets it up for the average of, of any environment. Um, so if you're in an extreme environment, like the ship is a pretty extreme environment, you have a really high density next to a really low density. It's not prepared to do that on its own. And so we're going to adjust our spreading. Um, since we are really close to the surface, I'm going to kind of um, half the, we'll, we'll start off with half of the spreading. So, so we're going to tone that down. Let's go to about 50% spread there. And then apply and see what happens. Oh my God, it all disappeared. No, it didn't disappear. So we have zero absorption. And so Let's go up, give us some more absorption, click apply, and for the offset, we'll do about 40. Now, the reason that everything disappeared is because of our offset. I put it at negative 100. Negative 100, it's, it's basically saying the, the towfish is standing still. So it's only collecting the piece of the wave where the towfish would have been. And so we're going to jump that up. Um, and you can watch our A mode here, the, the red there. And I wanna make sure that we get a good average in there. Click apply. 
So now our towfish or our, our Utah is pretty bright now. It's back in there. All right, so we're still got a lot of spreading in there. So let's let's drop this down. Let's take out all the spread all together. There we go. Let's see what we can see in here now. Oh yeah, now look at all the detail we can see in there. So good around the turrets. Good crisp edges there. succeed. All right, so that is the image we have now versus what we had to begin with. We can start seeing the anchor chains now. all of that good and that's by adjusting now tvgs and gain and we're starting to get a a really spectacular image of the utah where before that's where we had adjusted for the gain right still kind of bright in there and let's take out our annual gain and hit apply to all and that's what we started with Right. So if you don't go in and adjust for gain or your TVGs, you're going to end up with kind of an image like this, which is OK. You know, beginner, oh, I found something. There it is. But it's not the, the prettiest image. Right. And this will help you out, especially when you're hunting for smaller objects. I know a lot of our, our viewers out there are, are police and fire and they're using this for evidence recovery and victim recovery. And a lot of the times you're searching for that victim on an area that is more dense than the body itself. Um, so you're going to make these adjustments um, to bring out the body versus that background. And so let's see again what it looks like after our adjustments for gain and histogram. And then we'll come in here and add our TVG adjustment. All right, hopefully that uh, gives you a better understanding of what TVGs are. And again, if you still can't get it, you don't understand, give me a call, let's talk about it. And uh, I'll, I can explain it any one of a hundred different ways. All right, so let's look at some of these images from what they were to what they are now. And so far left is, is our original. That's what the, the survey looked like after the Mudsu guys uh, Drop the tow fish and went. Now remember, these Mudsu guys, this was day two of training. They never touched a side scan before. We went through the full classroom training, uh, which is an eight hour class. That's condensed in that basics to side scan sonar video um, that you can go look at. And it's not everything, but it's almost everything. Uh, but they took one eight hour class. The following day, we went out on the water. I showed them how to drop the fish and drag the fish. And that's what they got. I'll post a video at the end of this um, that shows uh, that day. And it was, it was a pretty fun day out there. Uh, all right, image two, which is in the middle, is adjusted only for gain. And you can see there are still some brights, there are still some darks. You can't really get rid of all the brights and all the darks um, with gain. You can adjust up and you can adjust down and you can take uh, the higher points away and, or the lower parts away. And so to get the really picture perfect images that you see in all the magazines and things like that, you need to have the ability to adjust for TVG. And so the far right image is adjusted for TVG and you can see the progression of adjustment. Here it is again. This is the, the Utah, the last one we did where we were adjusting for TVG. 
and you can see again the full ship at uh, original untouched um, and then the middle is adjusted for gain and the bottom is adjusted for tbg and that's about it if you have any ideas of what you would like to see next uh, please post it in the comments or again go to our technical site scan sonar group written at the bottom there the technical SAR side scan sonar group. I know it doesn't have the SAR in there, but if you type in that, you, you should, in your search, you should be able to get it. But it is the technical SAR, S-A-R, side scan sonar group. SAR stands for search and rescue. All right, so our closing thoughts. Remember uh, to know your sonar. Make sure you train with your sonar. Find its limitations. Figure out what it can and can't do. Don't hide your knowledge. Share your knowledge with Anybody who will listen that has anything to do with side scan, make sure you ask questions. Uh, don't be the guy who is afraid to ask because if you don't ask, you'll never get an answer. Uh, don't take shortcuts. Make sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. Lastly, uh, keep it up to date. Um, go on to uh, whatever manufacturer's website uh, you got the system from. I know our software gets updated about every six months or so. We add more tools, fix bugs, all that kind of stuff. And again, if you have any questions about Marine Sonic products, there's my name, my phone number, my email address, and the web address. So feel free to contact me anytime you need for questions on SideScan Sonar. I really appreciate it and see you next time.